All right, everybody, welcome into a very special edition of Cover 4 Live on YouTube. Looks like we're getting uh, up and running here and ready to go, and it's uh, good to have all of you with us. My name is uh, Brandon Adams. Of course, you know me from uh, Dog Nation Daily. We've also got uh, Connor Riley with us as well, Jeff Sintel, Mike Griffith. Each of them will get a chance to say hello to you. Why don't we do that, in fact, right now? Uh, Jeff, why don't you start us off by uh, saying hello to everybody and uh, greeting them here as part of our Cover 4 broadcast here today. All right, everybody. Hey, what's up? It's uh, we've got a first everything here. It's cover four. We do those stories all the time live on our site, but this is a live cover four through Zoom. You're going to see the stunningly handsome Mike Griffith. You're going to get the young and healthy Connor Riley. You got Jeff here. We're going to draft some bulldogs a little bit in a little bit. We're going to draft some bulldogs. Yeah, that's exactly right. Um, uh, uh, in, indeed, that is the case. And uh, Connor Riley, I know you're just as excited about this as I am. I could not be more excited to get this done and over with and just letting you guys know you're all playing for second. So, Mike, I'll, I'll say here, as we get ready to roll with this, this is one of those things where it seems like you and Jeff are a lot more excited about, like, and I'll explain exactly what we're doing here in a moment. But it seems like you and Jeff are a lot more interested in, like, rules and and, and creating some parameters for all of this. I thought we were just going to get on video and talk some Georgia football, but, uh, but, but, but somehow it seems like uh, you and Jeff are having a very good time coming up with a very elaborate rule system for the uh, discussion we're about to have. I, you know, I'm not sure where it ended. You know, Jeff is, you know, Centel's Intel runs so deep. He wants to have this in, in like NFL draft order where scouts can, who's the most valuable guy, one to 40, where I'm saying, hey, let's just play some backyard football and draft five guys on offense and five guys on you. So I don't know, BA, I'm going to defer to you on where we leave this thing. I can see the merit of doing it either way. So let's explain to people what is about to happen here. We are going to, as a way of just kind of talking some football here, have a draft and Mike is right. I honestly don't know. Is this backyard football? Is this allegedly 11 on 11 football? Now we're not drafting 50 people, but Jeff, what are the rules for the draft that we're about to do here? You seem to be the most eager to make some rules. So whatever you say is about to go here. What are the rules for the draft we're about to have? How about this? Let's, let, we all get a concur on all these points. We're going to have 10 rounds. Does that sound fair? 10 rounds? 10 players. Sounds good. We just got to move. We just got to move fast. Snake order. Let's go 30 seconds between picks. Um, and I would like for us to evolve into – 10 players that would build your ideal Georgia football team. Now, if you want to do five offense, five defense, you want to get three offensive players and seven defensive players, kind of like some of Georgia's recruiting efforts lately. <laughs> if you're a guy like Mike Griffith who hates offensive and defensive linemen and just wants to talk about those headline skill guys, whatever you want. But here's what I like. We're on YouTube, and Brandon, you know those YouTube folks get down and dirty. They pull no punches. So they're going to vote at the end of this. They're going to vote at every round. Who had the best pick? Who had the bomb pick? Yada, yada, yada. So they're going to be voting for my picks the whole time. Frank Patterson's already weighing in on this. Uh, he's, he's picking Zamir White, so he's already weighing in for what he'd like to see uh, chosen. Connor, I believe you wanted to chime in on something. I, I, I think to represent the bigger guys out there, let's make a stipulation you need at least one 300 pounder on the offensive side of the ball and one 290 pounder on the defensive side of the ball. I think that's fair to say a defensive lineman, typically a little lighter than the offensive lineman, at least to Georgia. So that makes a little bit of sense. All right. Sure enough, as we get ready to get rolling here, we'll take a lot of your comments on this. It'll be just a good way to kind of preview what Georgia has for the upcoming season. What is our draft order going to be? Uh, Jeff, once again, I defer to you. What order are we going in here? We're going to either go with the most kids or the, least amount of facial hair goes first we're gonna do so one pick and forth both times <laughs> by the way speaking of the facial hair i gotta say it's coming in pretty good here even for the afternoon version of the video broadcast i'm actually feeling pretty good about this now i think that i'm not cutting my hair again for maybe ever and let the beard grow out i'm essentially going to become like an old testament character uh as a way of just seeming a lot more wise and a lot more with it i think that's my new plan moving forward Guys, you know that Robert Redford, I think that's from the 1970s movie where the guy has got that gif and he's going like this. 
Yes. That's who Brandon is evolving into right now. And by the way, we should say that GIF is not Zach Galifianakis. There's yeah. a lot of, I mean, admittedly, I even probably an adult about a year ago thought that was Zach Galifianakis, but that's not. That's Robert Redford. I've not seen the movie, but I always thought the GIF was uh, Zach Galifianakis. It is not. It's Robert Redford. It's Robert Redford. The one where, Jeremiah Johnson. Uh, let me see if I can do it. Hold on. There you go. Is that it? Is that it? Yeah. Is that it? All right. So uh, sure enough, who's going first here, Jeff? Uh, you you would give us the snake order here. By the way, speaking of snakes, Alabama travels to uh, Alabama in uh, September to take on Nick Saban. But um, <laughs> nonetheless, what is the snake order for our draft here? Okay. If you're wearing Dog Nation gear, go to the front of the line. You got got you got Dog Nation gear on? I got a, I got Georgia gear on. Um, so that, that means you're the, you've got the last pick. All right, I'll go fourth. Uh, all right, who goes first then? Who's got Dog Nation gear on? Jeff does. You want to go first, Jeff? I don't care. We'll go I Jeff, to, Mike, yeah. Connor. I'm going to go Mike because he's want, covered the most. No, I want team. you to go first. No, yeah, Jeff, Jeff goes rule. first. Yeah. Jeff goes first. Griff goes second. I go third. And B.A. goes fourth. All right, sounds good. Jeff, you were on the clock. Uh, my first pick, uh, since we're picking, uh, we're going to play some tor- form of football. I'm going to go with my first pick. I'm going to pick uh, Richard LeCount the third. Wow. First overall for uh, Richard LeCount. Uh, pretty impressive uh, show of support for uh, LeCount. Obviously one of the top players in this team, but not necessarily the name I thought would go first overall. I got to have a leader, Brandon. I got to have a guy that can maybe play both ways. I've seen Richie excel in the seven on seven format. I've seen him uh, back down 290 pound men who have bad ideas and get them on the great idea. Uh, I see him doing backflips. I see him being able to trash talk a little bit. I see him as one of the heartbeat core guys of this year's Georgia team. And I couldn't put that in the hands of a talented sophomore, a wide receiver, a quarterback, or any other spot like that. P. Rich says if we're doing an all-time draft, he wants Todd Gurley number one overall. I can say this with all confidence. Dog Nation is not efficient enough to have a draft of all-time Georgia players. It took us hours just to come up with a format just to draft this year's team. There's no way we could bring in multiple years into this uh, into this discussion. I don't think. I mean, the first pick would have to be Herschel. That's it would be everybody. Would be oh, second, right? Yeah, that, I think that's probably. I think that's probably. I'm still fair. not right. sure about. I'm still not sure about the format. Jeff just brought up seven on seven, so <laughs> you're confusing me, Jeff. Are we seven on seven, or what are we doing here? No, no it's ten, ten guys, ten football players. You got to go out and play a Sandlot style game against. All right, I'm uh, with you, Mike. I think you have the next pick. Who do you want? Who do you want to draft? I'm going with the most uh, irreplaceable guy on the team, uh, the playmaker George Pickens. <laughs> wow! Wow! Yeah, that, that, it's crestfallen. That is absolutely a, a, a just a stab in the back. I mean, just a shot across the bow. After all I've done for Mr. Pickens, it is a shame <laughs> to see him on somebody else's team here. Irreplaceable, um, Mike. Come on, man. Irreplaceable. Come on. There's not another guy on the team right now that's going to make the plays that George Pickens has the potential to make. And since we didn't include anything about uh, – they're all out of school now, right? So this is like bowl practices. We don't got to worry about anything else showing up. All we got to worry about is on the field. And George Pickens is that guy. He's that dude. Well, I will say this. We had a guy from Athlon Sports on Dog Nation Daily the other day, and he certainly made a case for why he thought that Pickens could be an All-American wide receiver. ESPN has made that same claim for LeCount. So at least from the standpoint of what national media sort of thinks right now, it is interesting that a couple of those um, All-American candidates that are out there, now that for Pickens may be a little bit stout, but, but nonetheless, a guy didn't make the case for that. Uh, it is kind of interesting to see that those guys who kind of are out in front in terms of their position group they're the two guys that go first and second overall here. That's at least in keeping with what some of the national media has said here. So it's my pick next. Uh, I'm going to go Eric Stokes. I think he's a guy who can play both ways, play both ways in high school. He's got uh, sort of the speed necessary to get on the field and stay on the field. High character guy. He's going to be a leader on our team. He's going to be a guy who just wants to have fun, enjoy the game, and sort of, you know, also win. And – I would point out he's done very well against the likes of Jerry Judy, Henry Ruggs. So I'm not exactly too concerned about seeing how he would match up against George Pickens. Wow. I really don't know who I want to pick, which is going to be a theme for me the entire time. But I think I'm going to take a little bit of a flyer here. Actually, I got to take the quarterback. Let me have Jamie Newman. Um, I almost took a defensive guy, but let me have Jamie Newman. 
Um, I mean, to me, I, I think that Newman is the clear starter on this team. And I think he's set up for a really good year. If he goes on to have like, you know, some of the Heisman odds that project him to be, I, I'm not quite so sure I'm sold on that level of performance yet, but I, I think that George is in good hands with Newman. And on my particular team, if I got a chance to get him, I want to make sure that I do. So give me Jamie Newman here. All right. And you get and, the as well. It snakes back around. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to take Nolan Smith. I'll take Jamie Newman and Nolan Smith. It. I'm going to beat the brains out of all of you. I was going to beat my back. Yeah, look, I think that Nolan has a chance to have just a real breakout uh, season. He's obviously a former number one recruit. And if we really are playing kind of a – I don't even know what we're playing, Sandlot football, whatever else, in terms of versatility and just the ability to just kind of be a positionless player on the field and just make something happen, Nolan's that guy. So let me have him. Would you? Who do you think has the better season for Georgia next year? And you can even measure this in sacks if you want. Aziz Ojolari or Nolan Smith? Yeah. You know, I, I guess the safer bet there is probably still Ojolari, just on the basis of what he did. But for whatever reason, it's just sort of more fun to take Nolan right now. But um, certainly if you're bringing in, you know, what happened last year, what you'd expect to have happen this year, there's really no reason to – downgrade what you expect from Ojolari and maybe that's who I should have taken but it just seemed fun to take Nolan there in that spot I don't disagree I, if Nolan had been here he would have been my pick uh but he is not so this might be a little bit of a reach but I don't think he's going to be here the next time uh I get to draft I'm taking one of my 300 slash 290 pound players I'm going to take Trayvon Walker hmm. uh Pound for pound, he might be the most athletic player on the team. He was a very good basketball player in high school, very good track athlete. Played middle linebacker for his team down there in, I think, Thompson, Georgia. Just an all-around freak of an athlete, and I think there's a chance by the end of this season, you know, obviously with the loss, some of the losses on the defensive line, I think he's got the talent and skill set to potentially be the best player on Georgia's defense. On my team, we can move him around. He doesn't have to necessarily hit play with his hand in the dirt the whole time. I think he can do some stuff at tight end on the offensive side of the ball to make himself a little bit of a matchup nightmare. So we're going to go Trayvon Walker here. And Jeff and Mike, I'll let you both weigh in on what I've said about Walker in the past. If you gave me a chance to have a percentage of future earnings from a player on this Georgia Watt roster, with all due respect to Nolan and guys like that, I believe that Trayvon Walker's future earnings, if I could get myself a agent style percentage, 3%, whatever it is, I believe Walker might be a very nice check to cash at some point in time. Yeah, no doubt. You know, he's, he's athletic, he's fast, he's big. I mean, he's earmarked for being an NFL uh, all pro sack master kind of guy already. Um, you look at what he did in the end, end of last season with that sack against Auburn uh, to put the finishing touch on. This is after the guy came back from a broken wrist as a true freshman. So uh, he's an absolute beast. I, I'm on deck and, that, that was the guy that I was going to take. Really good pick from Connor there. But I'm going to take another guy because I think speed is important. Uh, I think uh, upside is important. And if you're talking about stock and somebody that I also think will be an NFL starter, uh, I'm going to go with Tyson Campbell. Him okay. and Eric Stokes are the two fastest guys on the team. Campbell was off to a fantastic start last year. Can't stress enough how excited I was about seeing him come up and run support and uh, really lay the lumber. A long guy with great speed. So I'm going with Tyson Campbell is my second rounder. And Jeff, one of the things I think gets overlooked about Georgia a year ago was how much Campbell was hurt. And really after the you know the first quarter of the season, final three-fourths of the season, Tyson Campbell is not a healthy player for Georgia. I expect that to be different this year. My point is, is that when Campbell was healthy a year ago, he was really playing pretty well. And I think that gets easily forgotten because we didn't see a ton of him for most of the rest of the season. But in terms of drafting a player pretty high here and a draft like this, and for those of us that are just kind of joining the broadcast, we're kind of, as a way of talking Georgia football, we're having our fun draft of Georgia players if we were going to play uh, pit teams against each other. Uh, Jeff, I've got no problem with Mike's pick of Campbell pretty early on in this process. Yeah, you got to figure uh, there's going to be some guys throwing deep. There's going to be people chucking it around like backyard football. And you want to think about the three or four fastest names on the Georgia roster. That's Tyson Campbell, period. He belongs on that list, although maybe his his spot in that race, uh, the match race or the 4 by 100 team got moved down a couple of rungs after the 2020 signing class. Uh, there's some serious speed coming in there as well, but uh, – you know, so far, I see a, a lot of things at work here. People are going for that BPA, those 
those best players available. Jeff, you're on the clock. Yeah, you are. I, I just, I'll give you a little bit more time, Jeff. Let me read a couple of comments while you get your pick ready to go. Uh, Bulldogs Mafia predicts that Tyson Campbell will turn pro after this season. Uh, we'll see about that. By the way, CB checking in to say he went to high school with a Trayvon Walker there. Also, Elite GB calling for somebody to draft Jordan Davis. That's another guy that I think that you got to draft pretty high in a situation like this. We'll see how high he does go. But in terms of crucial, can't play without Georgia players, there aren't very many names on that list higher than um, h- higher than what, what Jordan Davis uh, brings to the table. So with that said, Jeff, I'll give the floor to you. Yes, sure. I've got my – I don't know if you guys are playing it through, like, fantasy style, but I've got it. I've already got a queue of like 12 yep. names that I'm going to pick yeah, through right. the next three or four rounds. And I'm just going to scratch them off bit by bit. It seems that uh, Connor Riley's disappeared and he went back for a beverage or a cell phone charge. <laughs> but, uh, but really quickly, I'm going to go back to back that, that rapid fire term right there. Um, I just go with a guy that's maybe the freakiest guy on the Georgia team. Currently a, a key guy, captain guy. I like Aziz Ojalari for the okay. last pick of the second round. And I'm going, Todd Munkin, air raid, hurry up. No no questions asked. I'm dipping right back into the third round. The first pick of the third round is I got to get a quarterback for this team. I don't want to, I don't want to get, I don't want to get some of those up. I want to get, I want to feel good about my quarterback spot. And I'm going Carson Beck, the 2020 yeah. early enrollee. Carson Beck, that's my quarterback right there. You know, which really leads you to a discussion about. You know, if we assume that Jamie Newman's the starter right now, and we assume a healthy uh, uh, Dwan Mathis, boy, that battle to be the primary backup for this team this season in real football, once practice begin, games start being played, that ends up being a pretty interesting conversation, does it not? Yeah, and I mean, you know, you got to think you got Dwan Mathis, certainly track speed, sub 11 flat in the 100. Mike Griffith has wrote some incredible stories about it. Dwan Mathis can do a lot of things, but – I look at Carson as a guy that has leadership potential. His dad played football at the Navy. Carson's a servant leader. He does yoga. My team's going to be in shape. Uh, He's got dancers in his family, so he's got that nimble feet. He's got plus arm talent. He's about 6'4". He's about 230. He's got that hair game. Uh, I'm liking the way um, I've built my roster so far with Richard LeCount, Azizo Jalari, and then Carson Beck at quarterback. I got to get a quality quarterback. With that said, Mike, the next pick, I believe, belongs to you. Yeah, well, what Jeff just said, you got to get a quality quarterback. He kind of looks like he kind of painted uh, Connor into a corner there because I'm going to take Dwan Mathis. You talk about a guy that ran a 10 uh, You know, the fact that Kirby Smart has kept Dwan on the roster behind him 100%. The fact that Dwan has chosen to do his rehab down here in Athens – in this crazy uncertain time, when everybody's talking about being around your family, Dwan Mathis insisted on moving back to Athens so that he can be close to Ron Corson and the, and the George Bulldogs. Um, this, is a, this is a Walt Disney story playing out right before our eyes. This guy coming back from brain surgery last May. Everything I'm hearing about how Dwan did in the spring, uh, throwing the football. Uh, Jake Fromm says he can throw a ball 70 yards. We saw him catch a touchdown pass in the G-Day game, um, you know, definitely, I, I think Dwan Mathis is a capable quarterback. And uh, I like your pick, Jeff, but um, right now I, I like Dwan Mathis at this stage. We're taking these guys on what they are right now, not what they're going to be in five years. So I'm comfortable with Dwan Mathis is my third-round pick. You Mike, guys thanks for giving a Gettysburg address for your reasoning. Um, go ahead, Connor. <laughs> You guys are reaching for quarterbacks, dipping into them way too soon, worrying about who's going to be throwing the ball around my team. We're going to play positionless football. We don't need to be talking 60 yards down the field, putting them in high leverage situations. We're going to dink and dunk and, dunk and paper cut you to death. So uh, the next guy we're going to pick, uh, he is a freshman. He, I believe he will be the first freshman off the board. Uh, he is the highest rated defensive back that Kirby Smart in either Alabama or Georgia has ever signed. 6'10", 205, runs essentially the same 100-yard dash time that Tyson Campbell ran when he was a junior in high school. We're going to go Keely Ringo here. Again, more speed in the secondary. He's a guy who can play safety or corner at the next level. Certainly big enough to play wide receiver. I think he's a guy who – I don't know what his role, specific role is going to be at Georgia, just given there's a lot of talent there. But with quarterbacks coming off probably earlier than they should, give me a really talented guy, a guy who can do a whole lot 
and play them all over the field, both on offense and defense. Give me uh, Keely Ringo here. Wow. Jeff, I know you want right, a lot of good comments coming in. DJ First Daniel all, says hi, Connor. I got a corner already. <laughs> I, I think my man Connor is on to something, but I would I, I might have taken a guy in that lane, but not quite that lane yet. Um, that's a foreshadowing pick there for uh, Mr. Sintel. So a, a lot of good uh, comments rolling in. Lee GB making a case for Tyreek Stevenson, who I do think has value in a discussion like this. DJ Daniel there as well. CB liking Mike's pick there on that. Um, we've also seen some good comments uh, rolling in here. Uh, Bulldogs Mafia said he wanted to see the upcoming freshman get some love, and Connor Riley just did that. That puts the uh, ball back in my court to make a pick here. Let me see which direction I want to go here. Um, 30 seconds. Just to keep it, 30, just to yeah. keep it moving, I'm going to take, take N'Kobe Dean. I'm going to take N'Kobe Dean here and start to feel pretty good about the defense that I'm putting together. Just to, when it comes to overall ath athletes, it's hard to beat Dean on this Georgia roster right now. I'll pair him with Nolan Smith somehow, some way, and I feel pretty good about Kobe Dean. I like it. I like it a lot. You know, he was brought in on third downs last year. Uh, I know Pro Football Focus said he was one of the highest rated linebackers in pass coverage, didn't get beat very much. Uh, for Kirby to put a guy out there that really wasn't 100% until the second half of the season, remember he had that high ankle sprain last fall, B.A., I uh, really like that pick a lot. That's a guy that I was looking really hard at uh, before Jeff really kind of ruined the draft by picking Carson back too early. <laughs> Mike, I believe the pick now belongs to you here. No, it's the, you. Uh, you got two. Again. Is it me again? Oh, that's yeah, good. Let me, have, let me have Zamir White then. I'll, I'll take Zamir. I like it. Good pick, good pick. Are we, are we sure that's the best The best pick available, though? <laughs> <laughs> Look at Connor. Wow. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, um, uh, <laughs> I think this is a hopeful pick on my part because I think that George, to be at its best this season, needs a really good year from Zamir. So part of this may be a hopeful pick. This is as little chatter about Georgia running backs as you've seen over the course of an offseason. Really, really, you predate Todd Gurley's arrival in Athens to find a year in which to begin a season, there was less buzz about the Georgia running backs. Obviously, there's different reasons to like all these guys, but in terms of the national perception of Georgia, there's just not a lot of talk about the running backs right now, which means I think all the more important to get a good year from the guy who will have the first crack at being that lead dog this year, no pun intended, which is obviously Zamir Y. I, so I, I'm going to go a running back here, but I'm going to go with a guy who might better project in that backyard football guy. Again, we're big on positional versatility here. Can move him around, can play him all over the field. I wrote about him this morning on Dog Nation. It's a guy who Kirby Smart said had won more of these sort of individual one-on-one -on -one competitions than anybody this offseason. Might be a little bit of a reach, but I'm going to go James Cook here. I think he's a guy who in a new offense – and a sort of more specified, refined role other than just being limited to jet sweeps, I think could sort of live up to some of the promise that people have placed onto him. And ultimately, again, we're big on positional versatility, moving him around. He's a guy who can we can split him out wide or we can line him up in the backfield if need be. By the way, uh, Frank Banners in our uh, YouTube comment section does mention a good point. This draft, very different than the fantasy drafts you may have been in before because we're already several picks in and we're just now seeing running backs go off the board, which obviously for a typical fantasy draft would happen kind of in opposite fashion. There. No, and I like that pick by Connor. I, you know, Cook may even be – this may be even a little too low for him. When you look at what he does and his ability to catch the ball out of the backfield, the offense that they're moving to now, um, I, I see a little bit more West Coast, high proficient offense and, and getting Cook isolated – something that James Coley really was never able to get done. Although I will say there was a couple times I thought Cook was open and Jake Fromm just wasn't going to throw him the ball. He had other visions, maybe trying to get his old roommate, Charlie Warner, a catch or something. Uh, but I do think that James Cook will make a difference this year. We also have a uh, statistical correction here. Steven, good enough to let us know that Connor's claim that he was the first incoming freshman off the board when he took Keely Ringo, not exactly true. Jeff had taken Carson Beck prior to yeah. that. So, Steven, thanks for keeping us honest here on our comment yeah. section. Ed Connor, the, um, the ombudsman. Thank you, Stephen. Thank you That's very right. much for being our. So now, our so now it's my pick. Yep. And uh, you know, everybody wants to be the smartest guy in the room, and um, but in this room, that's not so hard to do. Yeah, it's yeah. still by there. This is yeah, definitely I'm not, the alignment. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm not in the room, 
but I'm the smartest guy here because I'm picking a guy that you don't have and nobody can cover this guy. Darnell Washington. You show me who's going to line up on him one-on-one -on -one and cover Darnell in the backyard. He's, he's going to come rolling in here. He's going to be a freshman All-American, and he's going to lead my fantasy Georgia football team to victory over whoever I line up against. So I'm going with Darnell Washington. Is my uh, I'm, I'm going to call him a, a tight end, but we all know he's really more of a wide receiver. Ooh, ooh, I don't, wow. know, I don't know about that, man. I think he is a – he better be a wide receiver. He better not be a wide receiver that looks like a tight end. He better be that guy that can, that can put his hand on the ground. And he can flank out. He, he better be that guy that can be a red zone threat. He better get in a little bit better shape from what Connor and I saw at the Under Armour All-American practices. I mean, he is. If, if you're talking about right now or two years down the road, Mike, I think that's where we're going to look at your pick right there a little bit, man, because Darnell right now, if we're playing right now, you certainly got yourself a red zone weapon, I'll tell you that. Yeah, I mean, I would say for tight ends on the field right now, um, I like the acquisition of Trey McKitty. That takes some potential touches away from Darnell. And I've said a million times in the show, I'm a big believer that Ryland Goaty, John Fitzpatrick, guys who it's not, at times get forgotten on the Georgia roster, I want to see them get their chance to catch some balls here this year. I'll be interested to see how much Monk can use the tight end. Do they have less two tight end sets they've had in the past? But you know, it's not an argument against Darnell Washington, but, you know, in, in terms of guys capable of hauling in passes, I wonder if Washington tops the list for Georgia in that regard. I think certainly McKitty's got some experience, and I think that there's a reason to like Goaty and Fitzpatrick. Mike, with all great respect to Darnell Washington out of Las Vegas, Nevada, uh, I think that you're the Mr. Freshman, freshman All-American type guy. You're on the radar for that team. Uh, I see a couple more worthy freshman All-American candidates right now in this Georgia roster. I think one of them is off the board, but I think there's a couple other freshman All-American candidates. And I guess this leads me into my pick, which is the last pick of the fourth round. Uh, this one is not going to break Connor Riley's heart, but the next one is going to break Connor Riley's heart a little bit. Don't do it. Please don't do it. I'm getting me some dudes. Um, cover them. Throw him the ball. Who's going to run with him? My back-to-back -back are going. Um, Wait, why do you get back-to-backs again? Because it's a snake draft. <laughs> That's how snake drafts work. You pick last, and then you pick first in the next round. But how is he picking? Oh, okay. All right, that's fine. <laughs> Brandon's sounding like Governor Kemp right now. <laughs> a little bit. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh. Get politics out of this. <laughs> um. Okay, I just needed a moment to to uh, to internalize my thoughts there, <laughs> but I'm going to go um, who a kid I think has going to have all the tools, um, and I, I I probably would flip flop these, but I kind of wanted to tease Connor a little bit with my picks, but I'm going to go for my uh, last pick of the fourth round. Seems like we we all like these freshmen a little bit. I'm going Jermaine Burton. The early, the, the, not the early, expected early enrollee, the former LSU signee. I think he checks every box for George. I think he can be an X. I think he can be a slot. I think he can play the Z. He can be a kick returner. He's just one of those fast guys on the Georgia team. He's twitchy. He has my own opinion and even a better opinion, the GOAT wide receiver at Georgia in terms of the record book, Terrence Edwards, thinks that Jermaine Burton has some of the most innate ball skills go up and get a ball you've ever seen. He's kind of got like that Neo Matrix type thing, slow everything down, bullet time, go get that ball. Jermaine Burton, my receiver core just looked a little bit more stout. And my first pick of the fifth round, Dominic Blaylock. My oh. receivers, when I'm rolling with Burton and Blaylock, are looking pretty good right now. Yeah, it's pretty I like good. To point out that right now Dominic Playlock is four months removed from an ACL injury, so I don't know how much moving around he's going to be doing out there. Well, we can't get all these guys together in more than groups of ten until at least a couple more months. I'm of the opinion. I think there was a TikTok video out there where Dominic was doing some dancing like two day, two months after his surgery. Uh, Blaylock is one of those crazy, stupid, fast healers. Those guys that heal so fast. We wrote about him a little bit in the Dog Nation forum today. With a, with a comparison to Zamir White. So I like that right now. And folks, let's do a reset for people that are just joining in. They're catching us. These Dog Nation dudes are doing a fantasy draft. We're going to play some backyard football. We're going to have some big uglies on here too, but we got to put together the 10 
Um, most interesting Bulldog players are the best players you would want to put on your backyard, your football team. Uh, my team right now, um, after one pick of the fifth round, goes Richard LeCount in third. It goes Aziz Ojolari, Carson Beck, Jermaine Burton, and Dominic Blaylock. And with that, I will return the floor to our beat writer extraordinaire. Mike Griffith's already got his next six picks planned out like he's got his next six stories picked out. Mike, you're on the clock. This is tough. This is tough because one of the provisions we made is that you've got to have an offensive and a defensive lineman in the game. And uh, this is kind of a value pick. So when I look at the offensive lineman, there's one name that stands out. And this is really going to break Jeff's heart because he's been saying this guy could be the best lineman for a while. I was the proof is in the pudding. Uh, I thought he kicked ass in the Sugar Bowl against Baylor. I think big Let me watch that language for, just a little bit, but go ahead. He, I thought he did really well in the football Thanks. game against Baylor. And uh, I think Jamari Salyer is the best returning offensive lineman. Uh, I think he'll play, do whatever I want him to do. If he wants to snap the ball, uh, if I want to lead block, uh, if I need him to pass block, uh, if I want him to catch the football. I mean, Georgia was lucky to get this guy. Clemson was all over him. Jeff, you know that. So I'm going with Jamari Salyer. Not a lot of sex appeal when you pick the big uglies, but I think that uh, he's a level above the other offensive linemen. Keith C. Finney in our YouTube comment section a moment ago says I was not laughing. The reason why I wasn't laughing is because um, I got confused a second ago. So I've been trying to figure out where we are and who's next and whatever else. There's a lot to keep up with for uh, someone like me of a uh, limited mental capacity. But nonetheless, I do like the pick of uh, Jamari Salyer. And uh, Mike, since Jeff uh, was good enough to reset his picks after the first five, why don't you uh, drop in and give me a reset of yours here as well? Yeah, so I went with Dwan Mathis at quarterback. Of course, you know, Dwan's going to have an MRI in May, and, and I think everyone is optimistic and hopeful that he gets cleared for the contact um, in the coming fall. I've heard he's had a great offseason. He lives down here in Athens now. Uh, George Pickens was the number one pick in the draft. I, I think he's the most irritable play, irreplaceable player on the team as of right now. I also have Jamari Salyer on offense. Uh, Darnell Washington, the big six foot seven tight end out of Las Vegas. I, I think he's going to be really hard uh, for anybody to cover man to man. Uh, and then my one defensive guy so far is, is really the DB that I feel best about. If you were going to ask me what DB I was going to buy stock in, um, even for this year, I think Tyson Campbell is the best defensive back on the Georgia football team. All right. Good stuff all the way around there. Uh, Connor, next pick belongs to you. Yeah, hold on. I got to get this knife out of my back that Jeff Sentel stuck there with his la with his last pick. Uh, again, we're big on was position. He on board? Was he on your board? Would he have been your next pick? Oh, he, would have, he was. At, I was thought about taking him at the end of the fourth round, but I, I thought he would be safe. Evidently, that did not turn out to be the case. Uh, we're going to continue with our theme of sort of positionless football, guys who can move around, guys who can do a lot of different things. We're going to go with probably a guy who doesn't technically have a true position on defense, uh, but he's big. He's probably the longest guy on the team. Uh, he's certainly someone who I think could match up with the Darnell Washington of the world. We're going to go with Adam Anderson. Great speed. I think for a sort of a backyard football, sandlot football type of game, I think he's kind of perfect. You can move him around. You can ask him to do just about anything. Again, he's the most physically, in my opinion, the most physically impressive looking athlete on the team. He looks like something you'd see on a basketball court. And he actually, I think towards the end of last year, started to turn the corner a little bit, make some progress, sort of have a more identifiable role and sort of show what he's able to do, especially on third down situations. I think that was a positive sign for Anderson. And again, we, we, we like guys who can mix and match and do just about everything. So that's what we're going to do on our team. On my team right now, first pick, we went Eric Stokes, leader of the team, captain, just a great all around presence to be with. And I think right now he might, I would argue to be the worst athlete on my team, which is really saying something because he's an incredible track athlete. Second pick, we went Trayvon Walker. Third pick, we went Keely Ringo. Fourth pick, we went James Cook. And then we just took Adam Anderson. By the way, Real Dream XP says that he thinks the beard's going to my head. Do you think that's the case? I feel like I'm the same fun-loving guy, a good teammate, family man that I've always been. I don't think I've let the celebrity status no. the beard has obtained go to my head as of yet. No, not yet. There's still time, though. There's still time. All right, so the floor is mine. I believe by virtue of the rules, I get to make two picks here. I'm going to go ahead and knock out both my linemen. I'm going to take Jordan Davis because I think that Davis is uh, really, regardless of position, one of the most important players in this Georgia team. So I'll take Jordan Davis here. He's one of the guys that in terms of 
his backup, the guy that steps into the field, does what he does. Really, right now, Georgia doesn't really have that guy. It's going to be Jordan Davis. As far as the offensive line goes, it's not an easy choice to make. I am going to take Ben Cleveland, though. Take a little bit of a flyer on Cleveland just from the standpoint that for Georgia to be as good as it can be this season, you need your veteran players to play really well. I trust Jamari Salyer no matter what position he plays. But Cleveland, who has kind of been up and down in his Georgia career, to really be strong this year is important. You can say a very similar thing about Trey Hill if you want to. But those veteran guys for Georgia are just going to be incredibly important for the offensive line to kind of match what it has been the last couple of years and really exceed what uh, the 2019 offensive line did. Because this 2019 offensive line was not great at opening holes of the running game. Uh, you need to be better than that in 2020. That means that, that Cleveland's going to have a lot of importance. So I'll draft draft him as a bit of a flyer on that and say that I've got Ben Cleveland and Jordan Davis, my two linemen. I do have Samir White on defense. I've got Nolan Smith and Nicobe Dean, and I'm lucky enough to have the starting quarterback, Jamie Newman there as well, as we kind of roll into our sixth round. So that puts me back on the clock again. Connor, did you notice how Brandon just snaked there? He did this. I know he he finally got it. He finally got it about the fourth time through. Uh, we're going to go on the offensive side of the ball here. I thought about more speed and certainly there's a guy in Arian Smith who probably will be the fastest player on Georgia's team next year. You know, he's actually an Olymp or a borderline Olympian, uh, you know, a few years down the line, obviously, uh, track athlete and Arian Smith, but we're going to take a guy who's a little bit more polished, a guy who can, I think right now come in and win routes against, against SEC level corners, a guy who, of the three sort of big time wide receivers and as well as Justin Robinson and Ladd McConkey as well that Georgia brought in, I think is probably the most ready to play day one, which I think is going to be very important now in sort of this truncated section. Give me Marcus Roseme as the wide receiver, South wow. Florida guy, incredible pedigree, incredible background. I like what he's going to be able to do against some of the best defensive backs in the country at the Under Armour All-American game. He was consistently able to win routes, especially out physicaling guys. He's not the greatest athlete in the world, but I got enough athleticism on the team to make up for it. So we're going to go roast me here. That's pretty good. And by the way, I'm being reminded by Frank Patterson on here that I haven't taken any defense backs or wide receivers yet. So luckily those are position groups. There are a lot of names on the Georgia roster. So if you got to wait for late to get someone, those are position groups where it's kind of okay to do that. And uh, Jeff, with that in mind, actually Mike, with that in mind, the pick's back to you. Yeah, this is tough. Um, some really good picks by Connor. He's got a very athletic team. Uh, really like those picks. Um, man, I'm, I'm really torn on what direction to go here. I know who I want to take. I'm not sure if, if I want to invest uh, this early. I, I don't – I think – I'm pretty sure I know how it's going to play out with Jeff. So, uh, this is, there's some strategy involved here. Not necessarily best next guy on the board. Uh, but we, we – getting back to that – getting back to that backyard football mentality. You know, my defensive lineman – uh, he was actually the highest rated returning defensive lineman in the SEC. Um, didn't get a whole lot of love really uh, last season. In fact, didn't even play in the first football game. That was Kirby Smart letting him know uh, that he expected a lot more from him. And by the end of the year, he was playing unbelievable. He was one of those guys that wreaked havoc. Um, he showed up big in the Florida game. So give me Malik Herring is my big for the D-line. Wow, that was quite a lead up for that bit, Mike. We appreciate you going into such detail about who you were taking. I think of this and I think of Malik Herring and those backflips, right? Mike just added a lot of athleticism on his from his defensive line mentality right there. You remember the backflips from Malik Herring? You remember that I do. Christmas commitment video where he's backflipping? You guys don't know this. He was backflipping by Jake Fromm's family pool right there. That commitment video, the Christmas commitments, was filmed at Fromm Manor way back in, goodness, that was in December of 2016. Maya's Georgia football changed a lot since December of 2016. It is kind of funny that Herring was, uh, as Mike said, our DNPCD to begin the season. And yet by the end of the year, I think that was the guy who had, if he had lost Smart's trust at some point in time, seemingly had regained it by the end of the season. Yeah. And you know, this summer, because of this whole social distancing thing, Malik can't have the picnic for his community like he did last year. I don't know mm. if you guys remember that, but he's kind of a man of the people. And, uh, you know, he's a he's a fun loving guy. He's a guy that Kirby wanted to really get, get him more serious. He said, I thought by the end of the year he was. 
Uh, get a picture of him now. He'll be going pro after next season. And again, the highest rated returning defensive lineman in the SEC per pro football focus. There you go. Uh, Jeff, the uh, floor is, is the floor yours. Is that right? Am I is, yep. Yeah. So I'm going to be like, I don't know, the opposite of the Minnesota Vikings not getting the commissioner of Goodell in time and not getting their picks in. Um, we're going to send these uh, via Amazon or whatever every other sponsor we can bring in right here really fast. <laughs> No free plugs. Come on now. <laughs> plugs, plugs are better than drugs, right, Brandon? Plugs are better than drugs. Yeah, it's just lost complete control of this. Wow. <laughs> uh, I've got you. My defensive back. I saw a lot of him in seven on seven season a couple seasons ago. I didn't know if he would stick around because he was a great high school receiver as well. Um, but I'm gonna go with a name here, Tyreek Stevenson, which oh, is basically <laughs> which is basically the version of Keely Ringo, but Keely's got a little bit more size, a little bit more shine, but uh, Tyreek's a guy that had to figure out his game a little bit, according to the Georgia way and the Georgia standards last year. It was funny how that Georgia had a problem with Notre Dame and its tight ends until mm -hmm. they just told Tyreek Stevenson to just, Hey, go take that guy out. Go shadow that yeah. guy out right there. Tyreek Stevenson is the last pick of the sixth round he's also a guy that can by the way get after a quarterback a little bit too if need be that cornerback blitz was something he felt very comfortable with by the end of last season i do like that and you know i'm tempted to go in a lot of ways right here but i want to just continue uh i'm going to try and sound like one of brandon's favorite wrestling promoters with the excellence of execution of this football team i'm putting together um you bet your bottom dollar. My team's going to be jet flying, Rolex wearing, wheeling, Rolex wearing, wheeling, dealing, kiss stealing. I'm going to go with an athlete for my lineman, an athlete that I think maybe Connor will back me up. Maybe Connor will shake his head. But if you want to talk about a guy that can play a bunch of positions, I'm going to check my lineman box. I'm going to check a guy can play some tight end because we saw him lead a pretty good Lithonia basketball team up and down the floor. There you I'm go. Broderick Jones, who I think I can get some tight end look out of him. I can get some athleticism out of him as well. 6'6", six, six, about 300 pounds. One of my linemen's off the board. That's Broderick Jones. My back-to-back -back on the snake side went Tyreek Stevenson and Broderick Jones. All right, by the way, Real Dream XP says he's burning the midnight oil overseas watching this draft, but it's worth it. Well, listen, Real XP, uh, Real Dream XP, we appreciate you being with us. And all of you are tuning in for this special edition of Cover 4 Live. We can't be in the same place right now. We're social distancing like everybody else is, but we are certainly looking forward to a chance to be with you here on YouTube. And eventually we'll kind of make this available on all the other platforms as well. But for the live audience, good to have all of you with us here on YouTube as well. And if you're just joining us, I won't go through all the picks that, that have happened thus far, but we're all drafting our Georgia players. It's really just an excuse to kind of have a little bit of a preseason conversation, kind of a fun way to do that. If we're going to play against each other, put a team together, who would we put together? Uh, you just heard Jeff take Broderick Jones and Tyreek Stevenson, which means the next pick belongs to Mike Griffith. Mike, go ahead. Yeah. Well, this guy, he could be watching. And if he is, he's probably pretty upset because he's been disrespected yet again. Uh, nobody seems to give this guy any love. Uh, he got out of his home state. Obviously, Kirby Smart loved him enough in recruiting. He's put him in leadership classes. He's not a big fan of the camera because he doesn't like just saying what's politically correct. He likes to speak his mind. That can be dangerous. The good news is everybody listens when this guy talks. Most importantly for me, he's a former running back, and he wears the number 32. Both of those things are near and dear to my heart. My guy's going to be Monty Rice, so you know that my team's going to mean business because Monty – I can't use the words I want to use because Brandon's already put me in line, but Monty's the guy that I want is my leader in the middle of my defense. I mean, my kids are actually in the living room here. Like that's the, yeah, that's the reason for that. But I think the, uh, Monty Rice. What kind of I homeschool think the Adams household have? <laughs> Listen, I think the homeschool thing is kind of, uh, I don't know. We're running on homeschool fumes right now. I sort of think uh, technically spring break begins next week. So I think that pretty well, much everybody in our household is glad to have that be true. I do think that's a good pick though, Mike. Uh, Connor, back to you. All right. So I do need a quarterback here, but <laughs> I'm not, see what I wanted to originally do was have Dominic Blaylock be my quarterback, given that he did do that for Walton High School. Uh, 
during his time. For the people who are watching that haven't, I'm sorry to cut you off, but for yeah. the people who are watching that haven't seen this, you got to go find those highlights. I know we used to run them all the time and they're probably easily found on YouTube, things like that. Some of his work as a, I guess you call it a wild Raider, uh, as a uh, Walton High School uh, player, some of his work as a wild Raider quarterback, that's some of the best Wildcat stuff you're going to see. He put a toe in the, t- in the turf and just make people miss. He was really fun to watch in that role. Yeah, he pretty much single-handedly his, his senior year beat a North Gwinnett team that had guys like Barrett Carter, Jordan Hancock, yeah. had a bunch of guys go on to the – that are already at an SEC level. Warren Burrell is at Tennessee right now. They were the defending state champions. He pretty much single-handedly won them that game. And I'm still upset that he's not on my team and not my quarterback. But really, I've just been filibustering to, to come up with the name. And I think I'm going to take my time in here. He is – I think he's probably the surest thing we know for this coming season. He might not have the upside that Jamari Sire has. But give me Trey Hill. I, I think he's someone who really made some gains during these last half of last season once he sort of got adjusted and accustomed to sort of the, you know, center profile. Obviously, he had big shoes to fill with Lamont Gallard and – I think the adjustment for him moving to guard to center was a little tough, especially just given his mammoth size. But I think once we sort of saw him get used to that role, get accustomed to it this year, I think he's going to be a much improved center. And under Matt Luke, I'm really interested to see how he sort of develops and continues to get better. So he's going to be my offensive lineman, and we're going to shut that down right there. Yeah, and listen, as I said before, I think if you want Georgia to be its best this season, those veteran offensive linemen, you have to have good seasons for them. I took Cleveland for that reason. I think Hill – uh, fits in that conversation as well. This is how you want to draft, though. Wait till late to go to deep position groups. I had a chance to do that with defensive back and wide receiver right now. Uh, for my wide receiver, I'm going to take Demetrius Robertson. I feel like the Robertson can have a great year in a Todd Munkin offense. This, by the way, goes on three consecutive years of me predicting d to be the breakout player. But you know what? I'm going to stick with it until it works out. Uh, and on the defensive side of the ball, as a defensive back, I believe he's still available. I hope I'm not wrong about this. I'm going to take DJ Daniel, a guy who I think played better than he was given credit for last year. Got a lot of experience. And I think that experience helps him this season. I think he's going to be on the field a ton in some form or fashion. And I feel really good about this late in the draft, getting both uh, Daniel and Roberts. Yeah. Mike, Go ahead. Uh, Mike, I would say that Kuiper, Kuiper in the booth is loving that D Rob pick right there at the tail end of the seventh round. You've got some emotional investment and some content investment in Demetrius Robertson. I'm sure you made that pick. You were thinking, you know, Demetrius Robertson was an athlete coming out of high school originally. He played some safety. He played some backhand for Savannah Christian as well. So, you know, Brandon's getting a little little bit more speed there. And I think everybody with the quaffed hair in the booth is liking that pick right there of uh, D-Rob. And then also another speedy DB, DJ Daniel. Brandon is drafting like a Georgia head coach, picking up all those DBs right now. Yeah, I feel pretty good about that right now, for sure. Uh, and that swings it back in Connor's direction for the next pick. We're going to go defensive back once again. A little surprised he's still here. Uh, and I think taking a defensive back, I think weekend some of the other guys who might need them a little bit more. We're going to go with Lewis Seen, another That's safety good that we can put back there. You know, I would say probably him and Nicobe Dean are the most easy to identify possible breakout players on this team next year, especially on the defensive side of the ball. He's a guy who played a lot in that LSU game, had some, had some good moments, also got outrun by Joe Burrow, which isn't what you want. But then I think in the Sugar Bowl, he starts for an injured J.R. Reed, played really well in that game, I, I think, for the most part. I, I think that the pairing at the end of the year between Cena and LeCount is going to be potentially as good as it's ever been at Georgia. So give me Lewis scene. You know, I've got guys like Ringo Stokes in the secondary. I might not have the best quarterback out there right now, but I feel pretty good about what I'm going to be able to throw out there on the defensive side. Yeah, that's a good pick. I like that pick, Connor. First of all, Connor, I think you've already got your quarterback and you don't even know it. You're going to run that wild dog with James Cook. That's what you're going to do. That's your quarterback right there. Yeah, Cook, and, and I'm hoping he's still on the board next time he comes around to where I can get sort of the, the player that I want to compliment that wild dog. Oh, who's next? Uh, Mike, uh, yeah, Mike, it's your pick. Yeah, I think Connor's playing poker there. I ain't buying that. And I already know who Jeff wants at running back. So I'm going to reach for my outside linebacker position right now. And this is a guy, you talk about somebody that got forgotten. I mean, he was the number one junior college player in the country. Uh, Without him, they may not beat Notre Dame. Really, you think about that last play against Notre Dame, an incomplete pass. 
Uh, I believe you had DJ Daniel on the back end to transfer. Uh, and then you had the two other newcomers uh, in the front that chased Book out of the pocket, one of them being Jermaine Johnson. So he's going to be my freaky athlete. Uh, you talk about these uh, Adam Anderson types and Aziz Ajilari. Certainly, I think of a lot of Aziz. He was uh, one of seven um, semifinalists for freshman of the year. Uh, but Jermaine Johnson, to me, is a guy with a big upside. I know he had some injuries last year. I think he's another potential breakout guy for uh, the newly minted highest paid assistant on the Georgia staff, uh, Dan Lanning. Well, there you go. That's a, uh, that, that's a good pick. Wait, who did you take again? Jermaine Johnson. <laughs> Jermaine there Johnson. you go. Sorry, I was busy doing some housekeeping here. You know, I think Jermaine Johnson's a really good pick. And by the way, this speaks to the overall depth of the Georgia roster. The guy as effective as Johnson is, and I think he is a very effective player, that he goes this late in the draft. Now you can make a case where he's been overlooked and was on the board too long. But the truth is it's hard to argue against anyone who has been picked prior to this. So if, if we're getting this deep into a draft and a guy like Jermaine Johnson is just now being taken, the team that you're drafting off of is pretty dead going deep. So, Mr. Centel, you're on the clock with your eighth and ninth overall picks. Yeah, they got some big names here on the board still. Uh, some really big names on the board still. I'm going to go with a guy that I've got my quarterback, and I'm going to just say, hey, dude, chuck it. Carson Beck can throw it 65, 70 yards, and we're going to see if anybody can run with him. And I don't think anybody's going to run with Arian Smith as the back end pick of the eighth. If we're going to play something in the backyard, and we're going to use speed and athleticism. He goes good. He's going to be my kick returner, of course. Um, talking about a guy that should we if should we have had some spring sports down there in Florida? He told me at the Under Armour week. By the way, the fastest man to the Under Armour All American game rode in that slingshot uh, with Deion Sanders. He told me he was prepared to run a ten teens, 10 10 one nine, ten two zero. He wanted to crack ten two zero. So the last pick of the eighth round is one Arian Smith, uh, another All-American. Um, so there you go. I'm feeling pretty good. I did like what some people did there. I will be total disclosure and transparency here. When um, when B.A. took d Rob and Connor took Lewis Seen, and then when uh, Mike took Jermaine Johnson, those were my next three picks on my queue. Okay. They just went bang, bang, bang. Arian Smith is the pick at the end of the eighth round and my ninth round pick. Folks, we only got, what, two of these left? Yeah, yeah. Jeff, you don't have a defensive lineman yet, so you do have to fill that requirement. I do, and my defensive lineman. I like some Air Force Ones with this story. I like a pass rusher. I like a guy that gets after the ball. Remember, I don't know if Mike knows this, but Devontae Wyatt played tailback at Towers High School in Atlanta. Good point. Everybody knows all those pressures that Aziz Ojalari put up and Nolan Smith put up. Another guy with all those pressures was Devontae Wyatt, and he's my first pick of the ninth round. Yeah. I'm going to take a page out of Bulldogs Mafia's book on here on YouTube. One of the names that he suggests, I think this is a good pick for me. I'm going to take Quay whoa, Walker. Whoa, whoa, Brandon. 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 You know it's not no. your pick. It's Griffin <laughs> and I and then you. Oh, sorry. This is confusing. <laughs> This is very Can we throw a flag? Can we throw a flag? Ah, Brandon, that's two, sorry. bud. So this is very confusing. Look, look at here. Look at my notes. Like I'm doing the best I can do here. Uh, Mike, it's your pick. First of all, I, I do. I do. By the way, think you should take uh, Bulldog Mafia's uh, Q and Tate Walker here. Okay, okay, Brandon. I, what I want you to do after everybody makes their picks, I want you to tell us if anybody was going to pick the guy you had. I want to know that. It's not going to go to the board. It's not going to go up. You were so eager to get that name out. Okay, yeah. Well, yeah, that's fine. Griff, you're up. Yeah. So, um, like I said, I, I know that Jeff wants Kendall Milton at running back. So, if I really wanted to, I could pass on Kenny McIntosh again. But it's, it's just doing the guy a disservice. I mean, here's a guy. You talk about depth. Here's a guy who, who legitimately has a chance to win the starting job. I don't know that he will, but he looked awful good last year. He had the longest run on the team, 72 yards. He might have even averaged more yards per carry than anyone. Willing to play special teams. Uh, he'll knock your head off uh, if you put him at safety. Comes from South Florida. You guys know what I think of those South Florida players. I am thrilled, thrilled 
to get Kenny. I would, I should have and could have, would have taken Kenny McIntosh on his value two or three rounds earlier, but I knew Centel was holding out for Kenny, Kendall Milton. There was no way he was going to take Kenny. I'm taking Kenny now. He's a running back. He needs double digits. He needs to get rid of the single digit, put a 26 on, get a man's number. None of this recruiting single digit stuff anymore. Put the 26 on, Sony Michelle, Le'Veon Bell. That's what I want to see Kenny wearing on my team, 26. You know, in college, Sony had, what, the number one, if I'm not mistaken. Single yeah. digit guy. I could have told you at the beginning of this, at some point, Mike was going to draft Kenny McIntosh. Easiest slam dunk to predict and peg. Was not worried about him taking who I'm going to take, who I think Mike was worried that Jeff is going to take. I'm going to pair in my backfield, my wild dog backfield. I'm going to pair James Cook and Kendall Milton. Oh, yeah. he just totally killed Centel. Check I, I, check on Centel. I've said before, I think the <laughs> world of Kendall Milton, I think he's going to be an incredibly talented, you know, long-term person and successful person in life, just getting to interact with him and his family. On the field, I think, you know, he was not asked to be a receiver a whole lot last year for his high school team, but I think he is a guy – you can pair in the backfield. He's physical. He is tough. You can do everything I think you're going to want in a running back. I think in the future, he's going to be a true stud for Georgia. And again, position versus positional versatility. I think we're going to play him some at the wild dog. We're going to just find the way to get the ball in this kid's hands. We're going Kendall Milton here with my ninth round pick. Well, see, now, Centel said that Devontae Wyatt played tailback in high school. So Jeff, I guess Devontae is going to be your tailback on this team now. He's huh? going to get a chance to do that again. I've got a lot, like, I got a lot of dudes. Ariad Smith can run <laughs> some, yeah. run some at tailback. We'll be just fine. Chandler Johnson said the reason why I keep screwing up the snake draft is because I'm uh, been killed by all this homeschooling. I think that's probably true. I think at this point in time, I'm just so worn out from all that. My poor wife, oh, the same on. thing. Hold on, Brandon. Let's get a true serum question here right now. Your lovely bride, Gina. How much is the homeschooling duties happening here right now? Is that 70 30? Is it 50 to 50? What's going on with that? Well, it's at least 70 to 30 in, in favor of her doing it. But you got to realize just the act of it going on just sort of takes something out of you. I mean, all these people were sitting around talking about what they're binge watching and what they're, you know, all the video games they're playing. Like around my house, it's just like total mass chaos. I mean, it may not seem like that for one second. That's because Gina's like bribed them for an hour to, you know, stay calm and cool. But they're going, let's listen, their attempt at like storming the castle begins in like two minutes as soon as this draft is done. I, I, I can absolutely promise you that. So Chandler Johnson's 100% right. All right. So BA, you've got your, BA, you've got your last two picks here. All right, so um, the guy I was going to take survived. Uh, I'll take Quay Walker here to go another defensive name. And I was hoping to get another running back, but since they've kind of been scarfed up here, let me go with another receiver, a guy that maybe I could even play at running back if I really had to. Um, I, th I think this is the best pick that I can make right now. Give me Kiaris Jackson. Right you here. took it. Go on. Uh, counting. Yeah, I like Kiaris Jackson here. Uh, in this spot, as I said before, if I get in a pinch, I can play him at running back. He looks like a running back a little bit anyway, and I do think he stood up to have himself maybe a pretty good year this year. So I'll take Kiaris Jackson. I think Jackson, there was a, a strong chance he was going to be my pick, but I was also kind of hoping B.A. would pick him. That way I can make the pick that I, I really wanted to make here. I know I already have a defensive lineman in Trayvon Walker, but this guy is a guy who played tight end for his high school team. We can move him around. He was – by far, I think the most impressive play, impressive Georgia signee I saw down at the Under Armour All American Game in Orlando. Kid's a brick house, brick house already. Incredible actual weightlifter at the high school level. I think a chance to sort of have a Trayvon Walker like impact for Georgia next year. With my last pick, I'm going Jalen Carter. Guy is 6'4, 310 pounds, everything you would want in a defensive lineman. And like I said, he, he's built like a brick house. You can play him a little bit at tight end. We've got speed on the outside. We've got strength up the middle. I feel very comfortable and confident in what we're going to do with my team. I think so, it's a really good pick, but I also have to uh, bring some breaking news into this conversation from a commenter standpoint. Now, if you're a regular Dog Nation commenter, you know what a big deal this is. One of the stalwart members of the Facebook comment section, Philip Jordan Wells, I believe this may be the first time I've seen this, has made an appearance on the YouTube side of things because right now we're only airing <laughs> live on YouTube. So a huge migration taking place. Philip Jordan Wells showing up on uh, YouTube. That is a very big deal, almost as big as Connor finishing things off by taking Jalen Carter. 
So, so I got a quick question. Like how Connor has been your great producer consigliere, Brandon, with your, a lot of your picks on the snaking. This is our last round. I want to make sure everybody's got their offensive and defensive linemen. I also want to make sure that Connor is bypassing the quarterback spot entirely. Yep. It, that's, that's, you're correct on that one, right? Yep. I'm going to rotate James Cook and Kendall Milton back there. There you go. <laughs> And there your you two go. linemen are, sir? Who are your two linemen? Uh, I had Trey Hill on the offensive side, and I have Trayvon Walker and Jalen Carter on the defensive side. Very good, very good. Just wanted a quick reset on all things there right now. Um, and, folks, guys, listen, we want you guys to hang out. If you guys want to rag a pick, if you want to razz a pick, if you want to uh, trot out people's facial hair or how people are doing with the snaking uh, and everything else, feel free to <laughs> jump in. But – I'm trying to give Mike a little bit more time on the clock. I don't need time. I'm ready. Hurrying to the podium, Mike Griffiths says. Hey, I thought it was your pick. No, it's Mike's pick. Oh, oh my gosh, Connor. Oh, it is my pick. Wow. Okay. Well, this is tough because I really like Justin Robinson a lot, but I've already got a wide receiver in George. I already got George Pickens. Uh, so I'm going to go with a guy that can play multiple positions. He play at least three spots, one, two, three, four, technically. Uh, a lot of talent here. Uh, again, not a real sexy name. People, you know, he may not have the longest autograph line. But, look, I'm here to win games. And this guy is a winner, and he's a leader, and his name is Mark Webb. And I'm picking Mark Webb to fill out my defense. Him and Tyson Campbell are going to anchor my secondary. Well, there you go. There you go. Good stuff. Uh, by the way, in the comments section – uh, Jermaine King, we're showing the picture of the 2017 Rose Bowl for me. Yeah, it's easy to, to uh, forget what I used to look like back before I had facial hair and back before my, uh, my uh, on top hair was growing quite as long as it did. Uh, easy to forget that, but that is a look at the old uh, version of me. And by the way, Carone Clark on YouTube says, did I use anything to get my beard to grow? That may be the best compliment I've gotten thus far. If somebody thinks I'm using performance enhancing drugs to get this thing to be growing out, that means I must be doing something right now. Nah, like everything about me, it is, it is a hundred percent natural. hundred percent natural. Are we done with this or what? Jeff, you still got a pick left? We all done here? Jeff's got one more. All right, go ahead, Jeff. Make your last pick. I got the last pick of our first annual dog nation cover four draft. Mike, I tell you, 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 sno you scooped in and got Gator. I was going to pick Gator because Gator can do some star. He can do some corner. He can do some safety. He was initially rated as a wide receiver. He was an All-American. He wasn't an All-American, but he was at the opening as a wide receiver coming out of high school in Pennsylvania. So, Michael, I will salute, so Michael, I will salute you, Mr. Griffith, on that pick right there. And that leaves me with one more piece of business for our Dog Nation draft. I've looked all over my queue. You guys have successfully wiped out all of my queue. I've just got one pick left. I'm not going to get the second quarterback. I'm not going to pick a kicker or a punter. Did anybody think that? The one thing I got to say this is, Connor, you were talking about bona fides heading into this thing. Raise your hand on this chat right now if you knew somehow, some way that Mike Griffith was going to end up with Kenny McIntosh and Juan Mathis. Yeah, that sounds about right. You guys sounds backed me right. into a corner there. Hmm. I'm going to go with Kyle Sherman, last pick of the draft. Wow. Kyle Sherman. I, I like his athleticism. I like how he can run around a little bit, play some inside and outside linebacker. There's some toughness to my Kyle Sherman there as well. I think he'd be the ideal guy for our post-practice interviews. What I'm going to do in my Dog Nation fantasy team, you best believe it that the freshman can give interviews, and you can talk to the freshman immediately. And Kyle Sherman would definitely already be on the all-interview team for me for Dog Nation. So I'm going to close that one out. Little known fact, a really good close friend of the Sherman family is actually Agent Maya Miller on Ozark. Maya Miller, who's in season three. There's no wow. spoilers there. Yeah, There's don't. an FBI agent, FBI agent named Maya Miller. She is a phenomenal actress and she is really tight with Team Sherman up in Maryland. So I want to ask everybody to read their whole team roster because nobody can remember 10 names anyway but i, I will give you down. say again got, i have them all written down if we want to go through them no no no. i'm saying but like the people I, can't I've process got, is reading yeah. each reading 10 names so what we'll do is we'll put it on the forum or on the site or something like that 
Well, I have all the, the teams as well, but people just can't process it listening to it. So if you're curious to see who did the best with the teams, why don't we just put that up on the form or something like that to give people a chance to maybe weigh in on that there. Hey, I yeah, got I got, I got, I got, a quick got one thing. more thing. I think we said ahead, the same time. Jinx. So I think we did this in fantasy football. It was a bad idea in fantasy football. But I think one last round, you pick your Georgia assistant coach, and it can't be Kirby Smart. And Jeff, you can go first since you had the last pick. Any assistant you want. Reverse chronology, reverse snake. Who's your assistant that's going to oversee your team? Dude, I'm getting to Dell. We're going to recruit great. I've got Dell McGee. You're going Dell. I'm going with, I'm going to go with the new rock star, Dan Lanning. Who do you, who do you got, Connor? I'm going to go with the smartest coach on the staff, according to one Monty Rice. I'm going to go Glenn Schumann. Oh, well, I feel really good then. If I'm picking last and I still get Matt Luke, I feel really, really good about that. I, I'm very happy with Luke. Now, are your players, are your players going to be allowed to uh, celebrate touchdowns or whatever? <laughs> that you want? Egg Bowl style, Egg Bowl style celebration. Listen, I'm fine with that. Listen, if, if, if we're winning, you know, just win, baby. Uh, celebrate how you want. All is fair. All is fair is in love and when it comes to that. Mike, it's not often that I say this, but that's a really good idea. I like the idea of drafting the system to be the head coach. Spontaneous. Hey, nice. got another one for you guys. Who's the one guy on the board that you would pick if you had one more round? <laughs> so at 11th pick? <laughs> I don't know. I feel like I didn't yeah, get to come up with 10. Who do you think is the best player lying out there? I got a, I got a, I got a name or two that's the best player lying out there. Then why don't you answer your own question then? Well, I, I'm yielding the floor to my elder statesman. And my I'm telling you, I don't know. I, I don't know. I would, I would probably. I'm too busy growing to facial hair to answer questions like I that. I liked, uh, I liked Danston Devod Wilson. He was, I almost went with him. Yeah, Devod, another multi-talented type guy. Interesting. Nobody went for, uh, went for uh, Channing Tendall, another athletic type linebacker. You look on the front. Uh, we had Jordan Davis pick. We had Jalen Carter pick. We had uh Devontae Wyatt we had Malik Herring picked we had the cornerbacks all, all taken care of uh I think somebody that didn't get drafted out of the uh 2020 signing class a big name like Jalen Kimber I mean Kimber's a guy that can run yeah. around a lot he's got a, elite athleticism for playing backyard football I think Lad McConkey would be a guy but you know for me uh you wonder about a guy that can catch the ball run the ball Dejon Edwards was also a consideration on my board as well yeah, I think that Julian Robinson. Rochester could have been one. To, was that you were to say, Mike? Yeah, I think Julian Rochester is a consideration there too. I was going to say Justin Robinson. You know, he's the only one mm -hmm. of the incoming freshmen to go through the uh, uh, off-season practices and get some time throwing with Dwan and Carson and and Jamie Newman. I, I think Justin Robinson has a chance to to really be an impact player this season. Hey, let's do this real quick uh, on a different subject as we get ready to wrap up, Mike. Since you just spoke last, I'll give you the floor here. Just give me a thought. What's on your mind with? Kirby having spoken this week with kind of a, you know, frozen scenario while we wait for the uh, world to get on a better health footing. What's on your mind? What are you thinking about? And if you could leave our audience with something here today, what, what would it be? Yeah, you know, I liked what Kirby said about deferring to the experts. I know that there's more doom and gloomers out there and it's hard not to be skeptical or, or pessimistic right now. Social media is just an absolute bloodbath, uh, you know, with people trying to take political shots and be divisive. We, either way you sit on, it's unfortunate. Um, I would just say that I'm still optimistic uh, that there would be a football season. It may be modified. I'm starting to hear different ideas of how it could go down. Who knows, maybe next week we do a cover four on, on how we think college football season will shake out or make our predictions. I like it that Kirby didn't because Kirby recognizes that when he speaks, everyone listens. But Kirby's smart enough to know what he doesn't know. So that's one thing that was on my mind was how he handled that. The second thing is uh, I would just tell everyone, to stay optimistic, believe in your country, realize what we've come from, what our forefathers went through to make us the most powerful and richest country in the world, and have some belief in these scientists and our leaders to get things done ultimately the right way. Jeff, George, how about a, George Washington never had to play a pandemic, Paul. <laughs> Jeff, how about, a final th how, how about a final thought from you? Connor, I like that one, man. Uh, ain't played nobody. George Washington played cherry trees in the Delaware River. He didn't have to play, he didn't have to play a pandemic. Here's what I'll say, guys. I, I, sometimes every day we sit there and we write and we still try to pile up our content. The one thing I think I'm going to try and do a better job of is just keeping it real. I think that if you know anybody, I've, I've got a circle of people that are kind of deep in the medical community. My wife's a nurse. Some of my best friends are ER directors or they work in hospitals. Folks, listen to what they say. 
listen to what they say, stay inside, do your part, don't be bigger than this. Those people that are on the front lines right now, staring this in the face every day, to me are the my simplest way of looking at it as an American hero. What they're going to do, they're going to decide this thing. The ER directors, the critical care people, the ICU people, the people that screen folks as they come in. If you know anyone in your sphere of this world, your community, your Facebook friends or whatever, if they're in nursing, if they're in health care, man, they're working their fanny parts off. Brandon, you like how I clean that up for the G-rated frozen language? <laughs> Our hindquarters are being worked off right now. They certainly deserve a lot of appreciation, a lot of respect for if we hold it together and if we soldier through this thing, like Mike Griffiths is saying, it's going to be due to those people. Connor, I've got a final thought from you. Uh, I'm going to compliment a person that I think would shock both BA and Jeff here. I'm going to compliment Clay Travis. I think every day on his Twitter feed, he tries and finds sort of one, one positive thing about, you know, the direction we were going with the, the coronavirus and whatnot. And I understand that's hard just given sort of the climate out there right now. I think try and find positives in the day, try and reach out and talk to people, you know, chat with them, do things that at least in your current setup can make you happy. And ultimately I think another thing, watch good TV shows. There's plenty of good TV shows out there right now that plenty of people haven't seen. Watch the wire. If you haven't seen it, I'm currently on season two. It's a fantastic show, but my underlying premise, just try and find ways to stay positive. We don't need this negative energy out there. Then that's already out there permeating in the world. Just try and stay positive and find one positive thing to do or one th positive thing to say to someone every single day. So I'll finish with this to our audience. A huge thank you to all of you, not just for being here with us for this very special Cover 4 broadcast today. And hopefully if you enjoyed it, we've got a chance to do this again, but really for the last few weeks. This is obviously a very different kind of time for all of us. And I know for me, there's some anxiety about not being in the regular studio and doing Dog Nation Daily the way that I've come to be used to doing it. And hopefully you've gotten used to hearing me do it as well and yet the opportunity to still connect with each other does continue so uh, from the bottom of my heart i say thank you for watching this right now for being a part of everything that we've done here thus far thanks for making it still an opportunity for us to interact connect with each other and look forward to a season that i do believe will be here when it's played i do believe that georgia will do very well so stay healthy wash your hands keep yourself distant from everybody else and we're going to get through this thing and we're going to be in a great shape thanks for being here as a part of this cover four broadcast have a great afternoon i'll see you tomorrow morning at 10 a.m for dog nation daily connor jeff and mike throughout the day at dognation.com and we'll look forward to speaking to you then